Herzlich willkommen bei der Business Stage. Wir machen weiter mit International Attention. Please welcome on stage Shaper of the Artesian and Co-Founder of SIPS Barcelona, Simone Caporale. Owner of the Wax on Berlin, Sam Arok. Und jetzt muss ich auf meinen schlauen Zettel schauen. Head of Prestige Sales and Advocacy für Bacardi, Martin Sorge. Wir machen das diesmal so, wenn ihr Fragen habt, bitte um äh, Handzeichen. Ihr könnt zwischendurch äh, Fragen stellen, nicht erst am Ende. Ich sitze hier vorne, macht euch bemerkbar, ich gebe euch das Mikro. Perfekt. Uh, first of all, This talk will be in English, obviously, uh, so I hope every one of you is uh, okay with that. Um, yeah, uh, just this year's um, 50 best bars number one with uh, Sips Barcelona again, congrats, and uh, Sam, highest entry for Germany since, I don't know, uh, a long time, 50 best uh, with the number 29 and just after, in the second year after opening your bar, Congrats to you as well. Um, just before we start um, talking about a little bit, maybe the elephant in the room, why are uh, three male, white males sitting uh, on a stage on a day um, which is under the topic of uh, talking topic of uh, diversity? I think no one wants us. Uh, to talk about that topic, and uh, we won't. Um, um, at least we won't be doing that regarding diversity of humans. Um, we will talk about diversity um, in the industry, in the system of 50 best, and uh, yeah, that's our focus there. We have heard, uh, we just have heard, and will hear today, many uh, people I admire, admire um, who are entitled to uh, talk about diversity of, um, of uh, human beings um, and sharing their positions. Again, we won't. I'm grateful um, for the way we come along in this, um, in, this, yeah, in this industry so far, but there still is a long way ahead. And um, it's, it's, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's um, towards a reality without hate, suppression and discrimination um, full of respect, equality and love for every being, no matter where they're from and who they are. Yes. So, <laughs> so we will be focusing on uh, questions we can answer based on our um, experiences. And um, this is um, why we have you guys here, um, because we want to talk about international attention. Um, how to get it, how to get there, how to shape a career towards the top, um, about the hurdles along the way, um, how the spotlight might have changed you, um, and then how to design a bar concept um, yeah, for success, and how to set up and build a winning team, um, and about mentorship, leadership within the team um, towards excellence. Um, yeah, so let's let's uh, get started. And um, how did you did you end up in the industry? What was your first first step in the bar in the bar scene? Yeah, I think maybe my first job in the bar was making uh, like Jaeger bombs and things in in Nottingham, where I'm from. I used to smash Jaeger bombs, and I used to make them. But then I guess it was really at uh, Soho House. I started to work at Soho House. That's how I came to Germany, actually. I worked for Soar House in the UK, and then they sent me over to open the one in Berlin. And then I started to take it a little bit more seriously and get a little bit better. And uh, yeah, and then eventually I worked for a guy called Matt Wiley in a, in a high-end bar. And started to, yeah, then it got really serious for me. And I had to take it a little bit more professionally. Uh, yeah, but that's how I got into it. Long time ago, that. And I started during the summer school break at the age of 15. And... Uh, you must be 16 to be legally elig eligible, eligible mm -hmm. to work in Italy. So the boss gave me a normal shirt, so I look like a guest and not a worker. 
but the average age of this bar cloud was like a 30 plus. So you will see a 16 years old boy uh, pretending to be a guest. I was actually collecting the empty glasses from around the dance floor and so on. That's how it started, and I never looked back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, and uh, when was the first time you looked at it as a career? So, and, and, and what changed at that point? I, and then I, then I pass it to you. Uh, I remember I was working on the weekend from uh, Easter time every year, and school was still open until June. And I was doing mechanic school for like a car engineer and workshops. And uh, we were working on engines and you know, the hands get dirty and the, the, the grease goes underneath the nails. So when I was going at the bar at the weekend, my nails were super dirty and I couldn't. So I started to wear gloves, latex, latex, latex gloves in the workshops. We are talking about the early 2000s where teachers back then could still yell at you and eventually be nasty new. I think it was good because you grew up with be, be more decency. Now they, they, nobody can say nothing. But anyway, I, I remember. I remember the teacher said, uh, uh, "I will never forget this," and I'm happy to say openly. And he said, uh, "Caporale, you scared to dirt your to dirt your hands uh, like, like a girl?" He said. And I was wearing the gloves, working on the engine. He said. I can guarantee that in the next 20 years you will still be here, like a dickhead, insulting to students. I will be somewhere else. So I keep wearing the gloves. My nails didn't get dirt uh, from the, you know, from the engine, from the dust. So I could work cleanly. And uh, and today I'm here telling the story. <laughs> so I took it seriously for the very first moment. So I was afraid to go to work, you not know, in the right condition, let's say, you know. In, the way he looks, my hands, and so on. And, uh, and if you take serious what you do, no matter what you do, no matter what you do, um, you will go somewhere, I think. You will reach some point. This is how, so from the very first moment, I took it serious. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. I guess I took it seriously when I moved back to London. It's like a, it's a really big game over there in London. It's got a really strong scene. and. Uh, I kind of felt like a very little fish in a really big pond, and everybody was really serious. And uh, all the team, they're like, they were loads better than me, the people that I was like supposed to be in charge of. And yeah, man, like if I'm gonna be honest, I went home a few nights and cried. I was like, what am I doing here? What's going on? I don't know what I'm doing. And just had to work like really hard, and that's when I took it seriously. It's actually really weird because that time when I was really taught to take it seriously, as actually this guy and uh, Alex were like really, you know, coming out of their, like heading the game in London. And they were a big inspiration for me. And that's when I first heard about 50 Best and stuff. And these guys were at the forefront of that. And then now uh, I'm on stage, sat next to him. So it's like, it's, it's quite a proud day of my life, actually. A lot of hard work goes into it and it kind of pays off if you work hard. So yeah, London is definitely where I started to take things seriously. And I kind of, uh, hopefully I brought a little, a tiny little piece of London with me to a, a little street in Berlin and we see, see if it works out or not in the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, is, it, is it still that different? Uh, so is London still that, that far ahead? I mean, it's like, it's like when you go to a, like a metropole city, I think just because the amount of people that you have living there and the amount of money that's involved in any kind of industry, it doesn't really matter what it is, it just seems to be more intensified. And where things are more intensified is normally like, kind of like leading the, the foreground. It's changed, especially with like global communication, social media, now people have this opportunity to come out and, and stuff. But I mean, London traditionally is one of the cocktail classics, right? So yeah, it's still like that, but things are starting to change. It's like things are popping up all over the world now. You know, you get invitations to go to somewhere and you're like, oh, okay, wicked. And you go to this bar and it's like an amazing little bar in the middle of nowhere. And you're like, fuck, yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, London will always be one of the big cities, right? Yeah. So, Simon, oh. No, I agree with you. All right. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I mean, this, this year's Bar Symposium is under the, the uh, topic of, of next generation. So, what would you av advise a, a rookie to to? Would you advise someone to go to London, or um, to uh, to to head for to aim for working at a 50 best bar to to shape the career? Or I will uh, 
advice, I would simply say that uh, put something of your own uh, personality in what you do. Um, perhaps London is a the def definite destination that can put you in some place that you can learn, uh, especially if you're young, stay in a place as long as you can learn something and then get out of there. Uh, yes, yes, otherwise you go, you're going to end up doing perhaps the same things and, and try to surround yourself with people that you can grow with professionally, people you can dream with as well professionally. Um, Europe offers, I believe, uh, f quite few nice cities for, for work or also for a quality of life as well. No? Uh, it used to be cool to say, ah, you, I work 15 hours, I take the night bus. It is cool. No, it is what it is. It's better perhaps to be in a, in a situation where you are, you, you know, you are, you live be more like a human. No? But uh, you can choose certain things. If you can, even better. Uh, but uh, talking about the y uh, younger, I thought you actually were younger than me, you don't, so. Um, uh, for example, at SIPS, uh, the majority of the big, big, big responsibilities are given to people that are under 30 years old, under 25 years old. And that fascinates me because I tend to forget. Then I say, stop, but they are 10, 12, 13 years younger than me. And they are, they are, they are managing a, a bar, they are managing a queue, they are doing cash reports. And, and, and so ultimately, this is a beautiful sign to say, Young people, they can do everything and they don't have to always, uh, you always have to bring over or ask to speak about the, well, perhaps you have more, with the time you have more um, experience, but many young people do it very well and that's beautiful, you know, and that's, and, uh, and it's nice to see them performing. I enjoyed it. I feel even a bit younger, not that I'm old, but. <laughs> You know. So it's uh, it's um, rather about like having having dedication and a goal. Uh, it's rather about having dedication than having a goal to achieve. Like I don't know, being a 50 best bartender or something about it. De de dedication for sure, as I said before. No matter what you do, and if you put dedication in things, the rest will come naturally, spontaneously, and goals will arrive. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, I think I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna hold it by myself. Yeah, thank you, sure. darling. <laughs> thank you, darling. So Simone, um, um, a question. When I think I saw a talk when you worked at the Tijan and you said that when people coming to work and they are not in a good mood or they are not really able to do their position, you send them home. Do you remember this? And do you still do this? I think it's pretty important for us here in Germany to hear how you lead um, your teams because when I talk to Monica or something, they all have KPIs and it's really strict. They have team trainings yeah. and I think we can learn a lot. So maybe can you tell a little bit about how you lead yeah. your team? Everyone can have a bad day, you know, and um, but ultimately this is a type of work that if you, people can feel your energy, good and bad, no? And you would like to avoid to go to a bar and maybe you feel this some maybe negative energy that can be for whatever reason. So I always encourage people to go home. Now, I'm also not stupid. I know if it's something serious or if there's something that can be sold perhaps with a cigarette and a coffee and 10 extra minutes break. But last week, for example, there was a colleague with a chewing gum. So this, you can now have a chewing gum. But you know, but I feel stressed. I can't sleep properly. So well, then go home and have a sleep. It's fine. And you go, oh. you say, yeah, send you home. Come tomorrow. You know what? Guess what? He took away the chewing gum, had a beautiful smile and a fantastic shift. So. Always give the option, but then eventually people automatically will uh, find out that you, they just needed someone to either to put their hands on the shoulder or a tickling behind the ear like this. <laughs> uh, and um, so I always encourage her, yeah, do it, go, Let, let's do it, fine, you know. Uh, and then people also perhaps can gain more trust and you say, okay, maybe it was just me that had this strange five minutes and now I feel a bit better. But I have strange 30 minutes, but I know how to hide it. <laughs> um.
good good start of the topic because I wanted to ask you guys um, about working ethics and and uh, we had that topic yesterday. I mean, you, you told me after so many years you still um, have you, you still really love it to work behind the bar and every time you're back in Barcelona you, you just step in the bar and, and, and do so ground service again. Um, so how do you keep up a good working ethic um, for such a long time? I mean, so me personally, I kind of like step, I, I don't work behind the bar. I haven't been behind the bar for a long time. I'm just, I, I'm not that good. I'm not fast. I'm pretty slow. And the guys that, you know, that work at Wax, they're just like 10 times better than I am. So why have like a, an old man behind the bar, you know, when you can have some like fresh talent? So I don't really do it behind the bar. I step in if I have to. I do some service, um, but I start to, to step away from the service side of things as well. Simply the guys that are like, up and coming that, that work at Wax, they're, they're just better than me. My head's like in the clouds, my head's on my computer, I've got emails that I need to answer, I, I gotta go and do this. I only open the bar, I mean, you guys have probably heard a talk I did before where I opened the bar on such little money, right? It's like 20,000 was the original. So I've just been basically spending nearly the last three years trying to catch up and reinvest money into the bar to make it work. So my, my head is, a big part of Wax On is actually me, kind of implementing training programs, finding the money to actually pay for that and the time and then give them to them and then handing the responsibility over to the staff. I mean, there's two girls that are sat here at the front. We haven't announced it properly yet. It's going to take a little bit of time, but Gusty and Johanna are actually the joint bar managers of uh, Wax On now. And that's something that we're implementing over a little period of time because they're just really good at the job and I'm just really not good at the job. So it's like, <laughs> like just get people better than you, right? You heard those like, TED Talks and it's always like, just get someone that's better than you if you own the company. It's like, it's so true. So it just frees up time for me to do other stuff. Simone, does the same counts for you and you just smash the, the crest of party every time you're, you're in town? No, 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 no. Um, definitely. Uh, I, behind the bar at Sips, I mean, Sips doesn't have a bar to stay behind, but on the, where we do drinks, I've done it maybe twice in two years and a half. I mainly do service, I, I check on, you know, I put myself in the corner and and I try to see as much as I can. And I do whatever is necessary, obviously. Uh, but work ethics, uh, things hasn't changed much. You still serve people, you still have to clean the table and you know, and, and cover some bar, someone is called sick and uh, life goes on. This is the nature of our business. Um, but again, em empower and give the chance to is better than you. Um, this is the only way to progress, basically. So uh, we always try to find talented, passionate, professional, of course, people. Nice to have them younger. And uh, you can see things uh, happening uh, beautifully. Sit and watch, enjoy the show, no? Sometimes you need to take part of it, but most of the times are, are, are good, nice people. Perfect. Um, you just mentioned it already, um, some, some strange 30 minutes, low points. Did you have like low points in your career, during your career, that where, at, at what, which stages you were considering, I don't know, dropping your aspiration, your quality, um, or maybe just dropping out of hospitality in total? Or um, did you ever know this is the thing and I have ju just to struggle through? Should I answer first? Sorry, I, I keep please, giving. Please, please. Sorry. Um, no, it's, it's not the same. No, no, I never had the situation to say to drop, uh, drop out. But um, again, you know, when uh, when I'm tired, or when we are tired, we tend to see things in a different way, you know, because you're tired, maybe you haven't slept properly. And uh, but now I, I know, it's good to know yourself. And uh, sometimes I'm perhaps I'm between between me and me, I'm not very optimistic to certain things. But why I'm so grumpy today? Ah, now I understand, because I haven't slept, I came from a late flight last night, I was in uh, Köln, for example. So, and then you, you, you need to understand your own personality uh, in order to be uh, in, impartial into certain decision. But I've always been in blessed and privileged to choose the job I want to do, which is in the bar, bar industry. And I remind this to myself almost every day because not everyone can actually choose the work they're doing. Uh, for example, my parents, they have no choice. They just stick to it. And, 
And uh, so, and this uh, keep motivates me. Say, why I why I complain? You know, <laughs> I mean, and you can also have a drink whenever you want. <laughs> you know, um, so no, I never s said to myself, I I no. You need to motivate yourself. There are good days and days where you need to a little bit of push, but this is a, this is in the human nature. I mean, it happens everywhere. It's good. It would be it would be a problem if there are no problems. Mm, because what is the, there's always this need to, to fix things is important. Yeah, yeah Simone, just a little quick. I mean, yes, a bad day, fair. But in, I don't know, how long is your career for uh, yet? Uh, I started when I was 15. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> you don't have to tell your age. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> um, but is there, has there ever been like a longer period of... Uh, where you said, oh, I'm, I really am in a, in a low of creativity, in regards of creativity, you don't want to travel anymore, uh, the responsibility is too high. Well, when you have a bar or when you are working in the bar, is the best place to train your mind, you know? Like an athlete, he needs to go to the gym. If you cannot go to the Olympic Games, you still have to go to the gym until reaching the Olympic Games, you know? And same for the for the bartender. You need a space, a physical space that you can belong to. And without a bar, after a few years, I was feeling a little bit a bit lost, a bit lost. Uh, because ultimately, you you can only express yourself in trade shows or consultancy or events. But you don't have your own ecosystem, which is your own bar, no, your identity. And uh, your bar has an identity which is partially come from you. Uh, same as uh, for, for myself and Mark. And any one of you in your bar, there's a little bit of you. So you need that space to, to root your, 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 your creativity, imagination, a way to express yourself throughout the drinks. Right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I agree with everything he just said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I guess, I guess I'm in like a, a little bit of a different place. Like I'm just starting out, I guess. Wax on's like two and a half years. So I'm just starting out in my, the highest point of my career so far. And it, honesty is like a really good thing for me. Uh, sorry, honesty is something that I really believe in. And uh, if I'm being honest, yeah, there's like, I have loads of moments where I want to give up. Like, I'm honestly not sure if I'm going to make it sometimes. Like, it's so difficult. I don't want to say bad things about it all the time because my life's like pretty good. I'm not going to complain. I travel the world. I get paid for it. You know, I get to go to really nice restaurants. I go to nice bars. I meet lots of people in the industry. I own my own bar. Like I get a place where I can essentially do whatever I want. But from the other side of it, it's like it's, in it's incredibly difficult. It's really expensive. And uh, I didn't have a big opening budget and stuff. So there's like moments where like honestly, like I'm, I'm not sure like if I'm going to make it through the entire process. Like you guys know what it's like to own a bar. It's like I own a restaurant. It's really difficult. It's really, really difficult. But I got this space that feeds my creativity. And without my creativity, like I'm dead. So like it's, yeah, it's just, the, that's what like drives me through. And obviously like the team and everything as well, they're really cool. I couldn't have done it without the team. Like Wax On would not, it wouldn't exist if it was just me on my own. It wouldn't be what it is today. It's the whole, the whole team. The people that are involved, they've been so involved in the creation. Yeah, okay, I like guide the company as like, this is what I want it to look like. This is how the menu's gonna look and this is what we're gonna do. Everything else is like the team. They're like more the bosses. I really, I honestly believe that the owner works for the, for the employees. I heard it somewhere on like a TED talk I was listening to, and I think the owner works for the employees because without the employees, you, you got shit, you haven't got anything. Unless you can work on a computer by yourself, if you're not, if you work in a job where you have other people, you have a team that work for you, you essentially work for them. And so, yeah, I, I guess that's what motivates me to get through the, the days, the long days, the short, the long days and short nights, because <laughs> I got a baby as well. <laughs> <laughs> is, um, is having a goal some kind of motivation as well? Like, Becoming 50 best eventually, so, some some time, for example. Yeah, I mean, what's life without a goal, right? Fuck life if you haven't got goals. Like, what what's the meaning of life? Nobody knows. So you just got to invent stuff that's important to you, right? You got to make up goals in your life. Doesn't matter where you work or what you do. 
you want to be an artist, you want to be a musician, you, you want to be a family person, you want to be this, you want to be that, you just decide it. You've got to have, you've got to have goals. It's like 50 best has uh, always been a goal uh, of mine. I think it's really important for the industry. It gives us a big voice. It's good. On, from the honesty side of things as well, it's like financially, it, it really helps a lot. I kind of like save my ass, really. So, uh, yeah, you always got to have goals. Uh, or I believe you got to have goals in life and you got to kind of like focus on them. You got to focus on them really, really hard. And sometimes you wander and you fall off a little bit and you get back on the bike and you carry on. And goals are super important. Yeah. Simona, from your side, I mean, you've been in 50 Best for a couple of years now with several <laughs> occasions, uh, uh, outlets you worked in. So, how do you keep that up? Is well, goals for sure. And to be really honest with you, and this is a. Uh, the sentence I'm saying it has been said already by me, so, but I'm happy to say it again, that uh, my last goal was to be in the 50 West. However, I knew that if you do something nice or perhaps de decently made, uh, most likely you will end up somewhere into this recognizement, uh, recognition, um, also, I mean, in Europe, every, all the eyes are on Europe. Now, it's, it's easier to be uh, seen and, and recognized and appreciated in Europe, or in certain cities of Europe, sorry, than other places. So the, lo the location also helps. Uh, however, however, um, I noticed recent, recently, over the last few seven years, this uh, greed of uh, certain businesses to be in the, 50, in the 50 best. But not even from a bartender point of view, which is understandable, no? because you grew up with it, you, but even from, the, from some investors' point of view, they say, we, we contact you for this consultancy, so, but why you contact me? No, I always am curious. No? Sometimes I ask questions against my interest, but I should keep, but, uh, so because we want to be in the 50 best. Well, and do you, you don't need me. You need yourself, because the moment I leave, or you, I mean, you need to, create a, a own system, a bar or restaurant, that can function by itself as some ethics, some vision, some, some, some belief, and in a line of work. So you can pay all the consultants you want, but you will never get there. Or if you do, for one year, and then again, you're out. So uh, I don't think the goal is to be there. The goal is to be happy, to do what you want to express yourself at the bar in the best way you can, uh, try to be perhaps a little bit original. I mean, there, there are so many copy and paste nowadays. And then I believe that if you are genuine and if people can feel and perceive uh, the reason why you do certain things, you will also end up in this recognizement. 50 best or the New Orleans, whatever, there's, there, there, there's plenty. But that I don't think can be the, 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 the main goal, or at least has never been for me. But each one, each of us has a different goal. So, who am I to judge? Do it if you want. I wish you all the best. Basically, if you can get there or not. Yeah. Over here. Hi. Um, hello. Yep. Yep. <laughs> right in the center. Um, I just wanted to ask the question: Where are you guys personally drawing your creative energy from? when you're surrounded by the was, uh, responsibility for having a team, being responsible for every individual, and also by being surrounded by all this business stuff, like taking care of bills and making sure your bar is like profitable at the end? Uh, well, um, uh, can you repeat the question, sorry? <laughs> So some, the creativity, the responsibility, the like, team. Like, like, where are you like drawing your creative energy from, and ah. how do you make sure oh. it don't get lost? Right, right. Well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, at, at the beginning, it's difficult because you need to do everything by yourself, and then little by little, if the bar starts to perform a little bit better, you can start to delegate also to hire an accountant and this and that. So at the beginning, it's just uh, it's just you need to put 300 percent of yourself. There's no other way. There is no other way, but that's beautiful because it's very stressful and you will never forget this, that time. And then sooner or later we say, do you remember when we were just three of us uh, opening the bar, closing the bar, and now it's, uh, there's a few more of our colleagues. Uh, the tough times make you wiser, I think. 
and, uh, and they make you more creative because there's no one else helping you, so you have to find a solution. And that's also creativity, it's not just making the drink. You know? um, but to be really honest with you, over the last few months, SIPS realized that uh, uh, being involved in this uh, craze, sometimes uh, you lose certain focus on uh, find creative solutions. And, uh, and that can be also dangerous for a, for, for, a, for a creative part of the bar, not the business, but for a creative part of the bar. So sometimes it's good to question, or sometimes you should question constantly what you do and why you're doing it if you can make it better. Sips over the last year, you know how many drink has created that are truly, truly Sips identity? Guess how many? Two. That's scary. It scared the hell out of me. But we were in, we only had this condition, so uh, generally the bars that bang out a new menu every year. We create two drinks. But the previous effort that we put was so intense that it still, it still looks very new. And, uh, and with this, then I pass the microphone to Sam. If you want to do something that lasts in time, so it's always there, that things need to dream. So things that last are the things that dream, you know, almost like a utopia. You dream about something uh, so um, absurd, 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 that if you manage to do it, it will last for a long, long, long time. Thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, more, uh, good question. No? I always like, uh, we have time or? Yeah, I'll make it quick. Uh, like creativity, like I, I, I'm a dreamer. I, I, I always have been. I, I, I used to get bullied when I was younger, like by adults and by other children about being a dreamer. People used to give me a fucking hard time about it. But then the older I got, like the more I liked myself. And then I'm the more I kind of like learned stuff about me as a person and what I need. So I always find, I like, I, I make up time in my schedule to like dream, whether it be like walking and la la la, that kind of stuff, so, because it's healthy for me and I understand what's healthy for my my mental health needs and uh, so I kind of like focus on that but I also have to move my creativity around the business needs so now we're talking about the money side of the business is that I simply don't have the time to sit down and make new menus anymore so we've within the company uh, you guys all know Damien Damien's taken in the last say three months or six months Damien's taken the lead role on the cocktail creation and now with the new staff training program he's uh, Damien and the team are doing the creativity on the menu while I'm to the side so I have to move my creativity so at the moment, like I'm designing a new uh, website. I did a, a set of workspace in the cellar. We have a new bar station coming on. So I just have to be creative, but it doesn't necessarily matter where that creation is. It's whatever you, however you want to do it. Creativity is, it's an art form, isn't it? And it shouldn't be combined. It doesn't have to be combined with anything else. You can do it wherever you want to. We have not a lot of time, so I'm just going to leave it there. Okay. So you guys are. Uh one of the best bartenders and idols uh, in the industry. And I've been to a couple of bars in the 50 best bars and it seems that, of course, you're dedicated, have a big vision, but how much of the 50 best bars is also bartending and the other one is uh, networking because uh, I see that there's a lot of connections and somehow big names always pop up in the 50 best bars immediately in the higher ranks and so many other big bars and great partners, just um, people don't see them. So what is actually the organization behind it? How it's possible that people from England in Berlin get into the 50 best bars and people from Germany have uh, the difficulty to reach to that top? Is that uh, the networking? Is that the lobby? And how does this work? as looks behind the scenes. It's of course dedication and hard work. I've been to the Zips and to the Wax On, it's a great bars, but what is the percentage? So I see also the 50 best bars a little bit with criticism that always the same people pop up. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah, thanks. <laughs> 
Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, so it's a really good question, actually. It's one of the, probably one of the best questions I've had about the 50 best. Because the, the truthful answer is, the 50 best, you don't know who the judges are, right? So if you don't know who the judges are, it doesn't matter who you know. So, but also from the same point of it, it doesn't, we come back to that, that same old, uh, the same old uh, saying. It's like, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And that works in every single industry, no matter what it is, right? It's always like human connection is part of society. So, yeah, it's, I guess it's like, it's who you know, but you don't know who the voters are. It's like, a, it's a secret. They're invited. So you can never be like guaranteed that someone's going to vote for you or something. It's a personal choice if somebody votes for you, right? So I guess it's more about like you just, it's more about like following your dreams, following your identity. And you like, I want to do this. You want, I want to have my own vision. I want to be creative. I want my own identity. And then you kind of hope that people like pick up on that and that ball starts to roll. And when it gains momentum, it gains more momentum. Also, we go back to the question, you go back to London, man, it's like, a, it's a mecca of like many different cultures, not just cocktails. Like you look at the music scene, look at the art scene, look at the fashion scene. It's one of the three big metropoles on the planet, I would say, right? You got Hong Kong, uh, sorry, you got Tokyo, you got London and you got New York. And that's like more things are gonna happen in those areas than, than other things, I guess. No, there are there are there are two ways to try to get there. You have a shortcut, or a fast one, a quick one, or a bit more longer term one. Which one you want to know? Both. The short one is what you just mentioned: being enough good with the mediatic resources. You know, it requires skills, requires resources, money. And not everyone have, has it. Some bars do, some bars they don't. So you can get the attention very quick. But ultimately, once you get the attention, then people start to see what you got on the plate, what you do, what you're actually doing in, 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 the, in, the, in the physical sense of your bar. Pause. Let's move now to the second option, uh, long term. You do what you got to do at your bar. Uh, believe in what you do uh, with your own identity. Perhaps you might need a different type of resource. For example, you don't have a people on social media, you're not gonna travel much, but you stick there. And in the long term, people realize that what you're doing there is really, really special. Let's go back to the, to the previous one. Uh, the moment you're able to be seen and being around and or invite people over or travel a lot representing your bar, people get to see you. Great. More people will see you because you've been everywhere. But then to a point that we say, okay, but what's going on in this place? What are they doing? What are they actually bringing you on the plate, on the industry? And in front of that question, there's only one answer. That positive or negative, that, that can lead you really there. Or say, well, they've been really good. Thank you for inviting me to a beautiful five-star hotel experience, uh, to taking me to the, with the canoe, with the jungle, with the private jet, with the whatever. But if you don't have, if you don't have a freezer behind your bar, for example, eh, what do you want from my life, you know? So the first year SIPs, well, SIPs opened in June and uh, 2021, and the, the, the awards were on December because of the COVID. The next year, SIPs did only one guest shift outside and never received a guest shift. So basically, we didn't promote nothing outside. We only did one thing, run the bar. What one thing is the main thing, basically. Uh, and, uh, and last year, SIPs did maybe two or three guest bartending. Nothing compared to other bars that they are full on. So, we never been successful being mediatic with guest bartending and things because we've always been there. But guess what? We work hard for it. So these are the two options. The first one, but very short term. And the second one, stick to your plan. When uh, last year, the colleagues said, well, Simone, they're at the bar, they're going around, they're traveling, we are not traveling, we're not going anywhere. I said, don't worry, let's stick to our plan, let's do what SIPS is, let's show what SIPS is, and the rest will come. And the rest came. So uh, take it as a chance if you are in a remote area, 
let's say, where no one goes there and to prove the world that you are doing something special there. Take it as a chance, because I would. But what, I, what I'm taking out of it is that you still have got to have a plan. So when you first designed the concept of uh, SIPs, was it originally designed to, to follow a goal, to achieve something, or was it just a design of how you want to design your bar? Um, and then, <laughs> on both sides, <laughs> um, you get what I mean. It was designed to win. <laughs> no, no. It was designed. It was designed uh, to be a place where we could feel uh, happy and comfortable, considering the fact that you spend most of the time at work, or at, at least our situation. So, uh, and we didn't want to end up uh, to offer you and propose something that people already knew what was going on. So, the moment you don't have a bar counter. People say, can we sit at the bars? No, I'm sorry, we don't have a bar. No? Uh, uh, it creates a little bit of a cu curiosity and also for a technical fact. Now, if you want to speak about technical fact, we can spend a, a month, but uh, not having a bar counter, it makes the service more agile. You can work more on the, on the action between the service and the table, the drinks, and so on. So that was actually needed. Uh, our creativity would have shrunk a lot if we were still thinking bar counter, table, service. Uh, and then ultimately, we, we also put together our experience, because uh, uh, now you, are, you heard a lot about creativity, creativity, no? It's almost, almost came a, became a commodity, you know? Innovation, innovation, and then you have passion, passion, passion. It's a beautiful world. Creativity and passion are very exciting, because they make you dream, no? You can, but then it, there's the experience. I'll do you an example. Uh, who's flying out tonight? Who's taking a flight tonight? Tomorrow, maybe. Somebody came by plane? Perf you, great. So imagine you tomorrow, or the next time you, you sit on a plane, OK? Sit on a plane, you put the seat belt, close the door, and then the cabin crew announced we're about to take off. Today we are flying to whatever, your city. And the pilot we have, his name is uh, Michael Martin, is very passionate about fly, very passionate, but he has no experience. <laughs> what are you going to do? You remove the seat and you get the fuck out of the plane, right? <laughs> so, what does it mean that uh, that uh, there must be a pilot named Martin in the world? So, yeah. uh, so what does it mean that passion, 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 creative innovation? Yeah, but then you need ultimately need experience, and that is it only be can be gathered with the time, 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 and. Uh, it takes time, and you need to, you know, and people say, and with this I finish, uh, SIPs open, and after two years and a half, well, but SIPs is two years and a half old, but our experience, it takes as a lot of years. So that what's matter, you know. SIPs, but I was born 20 years ago, and we didn't know. It was perhaps inside of us. Uh, you name your, your own bar is the same situation. It started way before it happened, and you need to treasure that. And if you, um, I don't know, there are probably a couple of uh, people in the audience considering opening up their, their own bar. What steps you need to, um, you need to, I don't know, follow uh, if, if you, if you want to open up a bar? Do, is it the, the red storyline you need to have first in your head? Like, okay, this is the center, like no, 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 no counter. Or how, how do you build the idea around a new bar? Yeah, I mean, I think I was talking to somebody last night. I can't remember who it was. Maybe they're in the room now. But I was like, you know, figuring out what kind of person you are. Are you a person that plans and then executes the plan? Or are you a person that just like does it and finds out, see what happens? And I'm definitely a just do it and see what happens kind of guy. Like every single time. So I guess with my opening, it was a bit like, okay, I know I need to have a bar because i got to serve drinks. I know I need tables and stuff. And then the rest is kind of like just build it as you go along like fuck around and find out kind of uh, scenario. But I guess that's in my personality, right? Simone, is that differently for you? Uh, the, beside having an idea of what you want to do at the bar, the concept, the offer, it's uh, numbers, 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 uh, the location, the location, and, uh, and design the overall scenario of what's going to happen if tomorrow things go wrong. Um, 
and we learn uh, from the COVID, you know. So you do five years uh, plan on the PNL, yeah, but you don't know what's going to happen next week, basically. So always have a plan B, a plan C. Uh, I know it, this is not so uh, enthusiastic, like uh, thinking about the cocktail menu and the drinks, but uh, numbers. Now you can have a lot of money, less money. It's a beautiful example of what Sunday you said you open with a very reduced budget. So money is not necessary. Uh, it's the, the, the location and uh, also to find a good dialogue with the landlord as well. Eh? People, you can have a dialogue if something goes wrong. Yeah. And what part does, does building a team uh, has to play in there? I mean, do you have like a profile of, of uh, a type of bartender you're searching for when you open a, a bar or does oh. it just build up as well. L Luke is coming now. I won't I will let this bartender one day open it, coming at the bar. <laughs> Mr. Schumanns. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so uh, I mean the, the team for sure but when you start is just there's just a few people. No? In our case we were four of us. Uh, and you have to rely on, on, on talented people. So the team, for sure, as things grow, the team must grow as well. There's no, there's no other way. How's yeah, it for you? I mean, like, yeah, I mean, like, team, 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 always team, team, team. You've got to train your team. You've got to support the team. You've got to build the team. I got a really good example. I came here for the first time three years ago, and Johanna was uh, working here. And uh, she's from here, and I like I saw her behind the bar, and I was like, I want to employ her. Like I really want to employ her. And I just I had it in my head. I had it in my head, and I, I never left it. And when I had the money, obviously, like the more money I get in the bar, the more people I employ, right? So I can do less and have some fucking time off, chill out a little bit. Um, yeah, every time I get it, and I've got someone in my mind who I want to employ straight away. I always know. I always know who I want to employ. And it was like, bang! I just sent her a message and say, hey, you want to come? You want to come work? And uh, it was a really good decision. Uh, it was my decision. No, it was a really good decision. <laughs> and uh, yeah, she was like there th like three months and now she's the bar manager and stuff like that. Team team's really important. You can't do it without a team. I'd, it'd be cool to own a bar with just like five seats and I'm like the one person. I don't know if anyone would come to that. <laughs> I'm not sure how successful that would be. But yeah, I mean, that's not the reality, is it? Team, 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 always. Train your team. And uh, talking decision making, business wise, menu wise, do you involve the team or are you more a one man show? I'm, step I'm stepping out of it. I'm stepping out of it completely. I hand more and more stuff over every single week. I hand more and more stuff over to the team. And I really have to fight my inner demons to try and not get involved. I'm not very good at it, but I am getting better. Hopefully, I'm getting better. Um, uh, yeah, but I hand more and more stuff over all the time. Just like what we said before, just it's like fucking. If people are better than you, just let them do it, man. Just let, just step out the way. Let your ego not be driving your decisions. Step out the way and just bang, get on with it. <laughs> How's it for you? Well, it's obviously someone must take the final decision, and there are people more uh, designed to take the decision and perhaps more to execute, other to execute. And it's, uh, it's fascinating because you eventually find yourself or by yourself to take the decision. Nobody will tell you if it's the right or wrong. Uh, you will know that you will have some positive and negative uh, res uh, effects um, oh, to put on the, on the, on the scales, on to, to balance up. And um, it's exciting to take decision. Uh, and also, it also depends a bit uh, also about how's your, how your character is. Some people are very cautious. Some people they like to risk. They like to literally to to jump, no, into the into the uh, darkness or whatever you want to say. Um, it's exciting, and uh, as long as you have a little bit of a backup energy in case to fix if something goes wrong, sometimes you, see, you you learn a lot by making mistakes. And um, I mean, you do. No, sometimes over. Try to avoid to do so, but uh, uh, it's, it's it's exciting to take to be able to take decision. Uh, but do you also have this sense of responsibility as well with the, because of the rest of the colleague. Uh, talking about responsibility, it, when you mentioned before about it with the question is to, to pay the salary, pay the rent and the supplier because I, I, if you have a two weeks delay on paying the supplier, you say, listen, can we give me a hand? They might wait, but you cannot 
pay, two weeks delay uh, the salaries to the colleagues because they have a rent to pay. So salaries first, and then you can negotiate a little bit rent and supplies if something goes wrong. But, you know, especially the rent, they have a deposit. But the, 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 the team members they, is the first priority of the business. The first priority. So there might be some, some uh, rookies, young bartenders uh, in the audience want to uh, come over working for you guys. Um, what do they have to bring uh, with you? And most, more importantly, maybe, what, what, what can you offer them uh, uh, when, they, when they want to learn for their career? Well, for first, um, no one is uh, working for Sips or working for Simone. They work with Sips or with Simone, which is a bit different. And uh, but I would like to Allah, it's that's what I want to to say. Working for is really no. You are with. You are next. We do things together. Um, well, you need to be eligible to work in uh, in Spain uh, to start with, and uh, we will give you as long as you are uh, you are happy to. Uh, you are happy to feel, and uh, you gotta be. A, we we look for like kind of a humble people that can li li at least learn how to listen. They know how to listen, um, and then each of each of each of them they will put something personal and special in the middle. That's beautiful. But um, we went through so many people in the interviews, and uh, the selection was a bit high, to be honest with you. Um, and there are many people that are very charismatic, that's nice. But then when it comes to the professional things, uh, it can be maybe something that they don't fit in the, the identity of the space. And, uh, and we, need, we, we look for people. And the word personal people sometimes is very rare to find because there is all, lots of ego, lots of, you know, the, the Instagram, this and that. So it's... Uh, we are, I, I, I can proudly say that the team is made by young, a very special, a very different, uh, very funny as well because they have a beautiful sense of humor. humor. And, um, and please write me, contact me on Instagram if you want, and I, I will be sharing information if you are looking for stuff. And um, we will uh, take care of you like, uh, like our kids. Mark and I, we don't have kids, and uh, and we are uh, we are very excited to be surround ourselves with the, with younger colleagues. Do we have enough time? Yeah. I'll, I'll be I'll be really quick because I think we're running out of time. Uh, I got another really good example. I'm quite lucky to have these two in the room today. Actually, uh, Guste came into the bar, and um, I wasn't working that night. Joe was working, and she learned all of the menu, and she learned all of the position numbers in the whole in the whole bar. And one of the one of the guys who was working made a mistake and took the drink to the wrong table. And then Guste, she was a guest at the bar, and she was just like. You took the drink to the wrong table. You need to move it to that table over there. And then basically Joe called me and he was like, I found this girl. We should give her a job. And she got a job. And I was like, yeah, fucking A. So it's like, if you want a job in a really good bar, like just go there and just like learn the shit, man. Like don't expect, don't expect everything to be given to you. Like show some initiative, right? And learn some stuff. Because you stand out, right? You stand out when you when you like take initiative and stuff like that. And then in terms of um, like what the people get if they come to Wax On, so, um, like educating uh, the team has always been like a really, it's a focal point of mine. It always has been in my career. I kind of got, uh, you know, I worked at some places that let's just say that it, it wasn't very balanced. It wasn't very fair. And we'll leave it there. And um, so it's always been really important for me. And I, I couldn't like open in wax. Like I just I couldn't afford it for so long. Like I just didn't have the money because it's so costly to like try and train people. And I finally got to the place where I have enough money and I've built this kind of like room where we can do the training and the research and development. And I've freed up enough time for Damien to be able to dedicate one or two days every single week to, to train in. And it took me, it's taken me two years to get there. It was such a hard like thing to do, but finally we're there and it's just starting now. And it's really important to me that the team get trained so I can do less and take more time off. Hey, to say it again. Uh, yeah, that's it. I'll leave it there because we're running out of time, I guess. Okay, um, so thank you um, yeah, for, for your insights. Uh, any open questions in the room? 
Hi. Uh, first of all, um, it's re I'm really honored to uh, be here. Um, you probably get this question a lot, but um, what would you recommend, like the main recommendation for a young bartender uh, with goals of op opening his own bar? The, what I would like say, don't rush it. Don't rush it. Yeah. Find a place that can fulfill your, uh, your experience, your expectation. Uh, do it when you feel ready. Um, uh, perhaps many bartenders dream about one day to have their bar. Yes. Uh, from my own experience, I would say, don't rush it. Don't give yourself two years time and open your place, no. Try to, as long as mm -hmm. you learn, as long as you're satisfied, the time doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. um, just don't rush it, that's what I would say. Um, um, so I'm don't do it when you're young, wait a little bit. Yes. <laughs> Exactly. I am one of your um, bartenders, a uh, student actually, from Esmeralda. Yes. Yeah. Um, we had like, um, we, I was um, in EBS Berlin last year. She's a really good bartender. Yes, I and know. And she's in a, a competition, right? Yes. She's but is this a question or this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is a general question. Uh, but yeah, is it, yeah. The, the answer is yes. She's a very good bartender. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Another one. Question for Sam. Yeah. Or to both of you. Um, what are the biggest obstacles in the whole in the in the, in the, in the oh man fuck I'm nervous as hell. <laughs> Um, what are the biggest obstacles in terms of your whole career? What you what you say are the are the toughest thing uh, things to deal with since you came where you are now? I, I guess personally for me, I can't obviously I can't speak for other people and how it is in the industry, but personally for me, is uh, managing stress. Managing stress, and I manage stress by being organized, getting your finances straight and stuff like that. But I find that when I'm more stressed, I make more bad decisions because I'm trying to do too many things at once. So I have to manage my stress levels and focus. All right. And with this is the last one, I guess. Uh, well, there are quite a few, but we we'll definitely stay to stay away, learn from other people's mistakes. I have so many friends and colleagues, US colleagues who who went a bit too crazy with their lifestyle, with the excess of alcohol and drugs and addiction and everything. And this is something that no one wants to speak about it. Or, I mean, well, it is spoken about it, but stay away from, uh, stay away from people that can drag you in into things that we will you will regret and will eventually will sign, make a mark for the rest of your life. Because it, it will, they will disconnect you from the world, from the people and from your Passional, professional passion. Stay away from these uh, these things. Yeah, right. Uh, I think those were uh, perfect closing words. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, thank you guys for for being here. And um, yeah. Give it up.